Because part of our challenge here, uh, I mean, you started a theater, um, is to create the layers and the richness and the tapestry of a culture in, in a land that really doesn't have it. And you came from a land uh, and a continent that has layers of culture, like a, a rich tapestry. How You must look at the Canadian experience in a way as a, as a thinner cloth, so to speak. Well, you know, when we moved to Toronto, it was a little difficult coming from New York because in 1959, Toronto was not what it is today. <clears throat> I remember when uh, uh, I said to you, I'll pick up a couple of bottles of wine, and there was no wine store. <laughs> and I came back, and I said, there's, there's no liquor store anywhere. And he said, oh, you have to go to LCBO, and there was a liquor store. And I got there, and they asked me for my uh, uh, identity for buying. Uh, uh, so I went home again and I said, you better go. I, <laughs> they don't want to sell me anything. <laughs> and you had to have in those days a card that right. said where you, where you were born. And, I mean, it was unbelievable what you had to, where you lived, how old you were, where you were born. I mean, so we got it and we were able to buy <laughs> wine. And <clears throat> I remember the first Sunday, uh, we had a babysitter. We were going to go to a movie. And Jan said, well, let's go and have a drink, and we'll go to a movie. Well, when we got there to have a drink, they s we had to order food, and we had already had dinner. Well, you couldn't buy, you couldn't buy a drink at a bar without buying food. So there was another novelty. <laughs> I mean... Uh, That's polite to call it a novelty? Well, I mean, it was different. <laughs> you got used to it. And uh, it was fun. I, uh, Jan and I both felt that it was fun growing up with Toronto. Uh, develop, seeing uh, the city develop into the beautiful city it is now and seeing people change. And he, of course, found it even more because he traveled across Canada into every little town and city many times. So he saw the whole country mm -hmm. blossom. Did he have difficulty getting his uh, singing career going in Canada? Well, yes, because when he arrived, he found that there was no opera house. He was an opera singer. So. Yeah, we finally got an opera house. Uh. <laughs> and he's no longer. <laughs> and he's no longer. Uh, no, Jan's first job when he got here was uh, teaching tennis. So not. an opera singer arrives in Toronto in 1959 and has to teach tennis. But very shortly after that, no, Jan arrived in 49. 49, okay. 49. No, by 59, he was a star. <laughs> when we moved here. <clears throat> but when we were married in 1950, we lived in New York and he had to go back and forth every oh, week see. for songs of my people. The joke was that he got paid $75 for songs of my people and it cost him $125 to get here. On the train? He had to, no, on the plane. Train. On the plane? On the plane. Every morning, Friday mornings, he flew on the 10 o'clock flight to Toronto and back on the 10 o'clock evening flight to New York. But he loved the show. Wow. He wasn't going to give it up. But it cost him $50 to do the show. Oh, those were funny days. And Toronto in the late 50s, it still had a lot of its Protestantness. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about the LCBO, you talk about you have to drink if you want to eat, or you have to eat, you have to eat if you're going you to drink. To drink. <laughs> um, for a very cosmopolitan person like yourself from Europe, the Protestantness must have, I mean, you're, you, see, you say polite, it's novel, but in a way it inhibited a lot of things that we weren't doing at that time. Well, um, I was looking after three little boys, so I didn't have much time to, and Jan was traveling quite a lot, so. <clears throat> uh, 
you make a life around the neighborhood that you live in, and you make a life around your children. But I did want to somehow, <clears throat> the more I saw schools, the more I felt that there, there was always music in schools. In uh, 1963, when I started doing uh, plays in schools, they always had music and they always accepted it. And the school boards always paid for it. But somehow to bring theater and ballet and opera into schools was uh, a little strange. And um, the trick was they were willing to let these companies come in and the children would have to pay for it. And we said, you can't do that. We won't do that. Because, because a lot of schools had children that yeah. couldn't have, they barely had yeah. lunch. So the, <clears throat> the trick really was to talk the school boards into paying for these performances. And we started out with uh, 10 theater performances, eight operas, and eight ballets. This is touring into schools in the Toronto area? Yeah. And the first one we, uh, we got into, I lived, uh, Jan and I lived in North York. And Dr. Minkler was head of the North York School Board, which was quite a powerful school board. It was large and it was wealthy. Um, so uh, I went to Dr. Minkler first. And, yeah, and we knew that Dr. Minkler was a big golfer. So I said to Jan, you're going to have to go and play golf with him. And Jan said, well, I'll play golf with him. Um, so I talked Dr. Minkler. He was the first one who said, all right, we'll pay for these performances, but you have to go to the schools and get the principal to take you. Right. Even though the school board was going to pay for it. And a lot of principals were not interested because it was a disruption. Right. So, uh, I mean, we found the schools, but we had to go to a lot of schools. Some of them wouldn't have the ballet. They said, we don't want the ballets. And uh, the opera was difficult, too. Uh, the theater was easier because uh, I said I would take the kindergarten to grade three performances. And then the ballet said that they would take the four to six. Now the operas had to take the what they call the high school because they felt that opera for the little. Anyway, that's how it was divided the first year. So <clears throat> my performances were a lot easier because uh, uh, the principals thought that was kind of nice. Yeah, stories for gym, kids. And the children would sit on the floor and there was an hour, and the, the teachers were keen on it, so it was not. The ballet was a little bit harder because, again, the principals thought, well, there were these boys in their tights. They didn't think that that somehow would go well. But we, we found schools, and the operas were the hardest because the principals said, well, you can do, but I'm telling you, you're going to have kids whistle and send spitballs, and that's how the high schools. So that was the hardest, but we managed. And of all the, what sort of proportion of the principals you went to accepted the idea? Was it 50-50 or? Well, the, uh, for the little ones that, that uh, had the theater, I think I went to 12 schools and 10 took it. Two of them said they had music and that was enough. And, but so that wasn't hard. But I think we went for, for the ballet 18 schools before 10 took it. Right. And the uh, operas were horrible. I cannot tell you where we went to different school boards. And, and I think we got 
half the Toronto board, and I think a couple in Scarborough and North York. And was Jan singing with those groups that went out, or? No. 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 Uh, Jan didn't start till later, and he did all kinds of things for the school boards, but uh, <coughs> they didn't have solo performers couldn't go into school boards at that time. They had to go under the umbrella, so right. YPT took Jan's performances. And he did performances for the little children with uh, 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 Ann Linden, and he, they did thousands of performances eventually huh. for the K-3. to And then he had a, a show called Stab, which he wrote, which was a soprano, tenor, alto, and bass that he wrote and they did together. And he did. It strikes me there's a, talking about Protestant Toronto in 1959 and starting YPT in the 60s, that your approach to John Sewell, uh, a, may, a mayor of a, not an unintelligent mayor of a major Canadian city, and for him to say, well, I could lose money, um, and to have a, a resistant attitude and to approach the principals and have so many principals say, no, I don't want young men in tights in my schools, it's not appropriate, or let alone opera. It's the same uh, resistance to actually embracing and exploring culture that you were running uphill against. Well, but that's how it was, and you had to accept it. You had to fight to change it, you know. And eventually, uh, 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 most of the principals and teachers were thrilled with what they had. And I remember uh, Celia Franca saying to the boys, there were six dancers, three girls and three boys. Celia, she was running the, the ballet at the time. Yeah. And she said to the boys, when you're going through the halls of the schools before the performances, you show them a few tricks. And I remember the first time <laughs> the boys went down the hall, and they went up the side of the walls, and the, and the kids were beside themselves. Right. I mean, the, the boys as well as the girls, they were so in awe of what they could do that when the performance came, they, they, were, just, they were enthralled. But Celia was very clever. She said, you show those boys what you can do that they can't do. Wow. And those were the kind of funny tricks you had to come up with when you went into schools to somehow get them. But Jan did wonderful things uh, for the schools. They, uh, you run into, uh, into principals that are still are retired and are still around who say that Jan had a wonderful thing with youngsters. He just connected with kids and youngsters, and they accepted whatever he told them, whatever he did. And what was the, the stab, soprano, alter tenor, bass? Uh, they, uh, <coughs> he talked a little bit about the voice. Then he said, this is what a soprano sounds like. This is what a tenor sounds like. This is what an alto sounds like. I'm a bass. This is what I sound like. And then they. Uh, uh, they, he wrote a show using different arias and different things together, so it made it fun for them. And at the same time, they were fed a lot of opera arias. So, right. Yeah. I remember. Then I might he did *Man of La Mancha*. If you can believe it, he got the rights to take it into the schools. And it was condensed, because it had to also be an hour long. And uh, a lot of the teachers said to Jan <coughs> how they had tears, the kids, mm -hmm. when, uh, when he sang the, the final aria where he's dying. It was wonderful. And Somebody came from New York, I remember, to one of the schools, because this was material that he had condensed. Uh, they weren't very sure that that was going to be all right. 
And how far outside of Toronto w would these uh, oh, they school visits go? Oh, they went far. They went all around Ontario. They went to, uh, uh, they went as far as uh, uh, Thunder Bay. But that, was that school board funding or school. would that be provincial funding? No, schools. Schools, uh, the, the uh, school boards had to fund it.